I got the sign. So how is everybody doing this morning? Okay, good. Hope you had a great week. Thanks for coming out this morning, and thanks for all of you who are watching online today. Um, welcome. So if you'll stand with us, um, it's just going to be me this morning, so sing loud, everybody. We're going to start with a song called It Close. moment to, well, we can praise the Lord, can't we? Thank you, Lord, for your closeness. Amen. Would you take a moment to greet your neighbor and let him know how glad you are to see him today? Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, good morning. Um, you guys go ahead and be seated. Um, welcome to Church in the Village this morning. For you that are uh, um, here and don't know who I am, and for you that are watching online, I'm Eric. I'm the pastor here. I'm glad that you joined us this morning. We do have a few announcements this morning before we get rolling, and, and uh, it's a lot warmer in here than it is outside. Um, so, but then sometimes in the summertime, it's a lot warmer than here than it is outside as well. So, but I'll take it today. Um, we do have a uh, student crossing tonight at 7.30 for you Bengals fans. We will be, or at 6.30, we will be done well in time for you guys to get back and watch that game. So if you're a student and you want to come out tonight and just kind of have fun and, and learn a little bit about God redeeming the world, we start 6.30 at the Ministry Center. And with the students, we're also going to Winter Jam um, this coming Friday. We're going to meet at the Ministry Center at 4, and uh, we'll kind of proceed after that to the pre-jam, I think, starts at like 6.15, which is just kind of local Christian bands. And then the real um, concert starts at 7. Um, we've got some transportation to go down, so we're all going to try to ride in a van. Um, if you're not a student and you would like to go, um, you're more than welcome to go with us or follow us down there or if just meet us down there and say, hey, um, it's $15 at the door for everybody, and it's just kind of general seating. Um, if you get there real early, you can line up outside. Um, because there will be some people lined up outside most of the day, and they'll kind of get the floor seats, but um, I'm okay sitting back. I'm an old man now. Um, my ears can't handle all that stuff anymore, but now what, and if you don't know what Winter Jam is, it's just kind of a way to introduce some Christian music. It's got all different styles of, of bands. It's got rock. It's got rap. It's got pop. It's got worship music, um, so it's, it's usually a pretty cool night, usually um, like it kind of like, oh, wow, I didn't know this kind of music existed. So if you want to be a part of that, just let us know. Um, if you just want to meet us down there, let us know that you're going to meet us down there, and we just want to say hey, you know, and, you know, kind of shake your hands, that kind of stuff. Um, we do have Village Crossing at my house this week at 630. So if you want to be a part of that, we're going to start the second season of The Chosen, kind of go through that and kind of look at the life of Jesus in that. Uh, Mom still meet, Mom is still meeting on Sunday mornings if anybody wants to wake up early on Sunday mornings. Um, on January 23rd, we could use some help. We are going to serve um, the Pee Wee Cheerleaders Banquet just right out here. In this, uh, we're not serving them like a big meal. We're just going to do some popcorn and, and some treats for them after their banquet. And we did it last year, so if you want to come out and help with that, um, just meet us here 545-ish, 6 o'clock, and we can get, start getting everything ready. And uh, that way we can um, kind of show those cheerleaders that we love them. Um, with that, I'm going to pray. I'm going to turn it back over to Amber. I'm glad for Amber today. The Parkers are just needing a day of rest this morning. So if they're watching this morning, we miss you guys. And, and uh, they just need some rest. And Jen's birthday was this past week. We also had somebody else's birthday this past week, Matt's birthday. Um, this, this young man here in the Bengals jersey. Um, I would bring him on stage, but he's wearing a Bengals jersey. <laughs> um, but that's why he did it. But no, Matt's birthday was this past Wednesday. He turned 50. I know he doesn't look like he's 50, but uh, he feels like it at times, right? So, uh, so Jen, if you guys happen to see him, just wish him a happy belated birthday. Um, so let's play, pray. Father, we thank you so much for love, and we thank you so much for mercy, and we thank you so much for grace, and we thank you so much for, as we dig in today, that, that when we follow you, you light our path. In a world that is just dark and gloomy and it just seems like everywhere you turn it's just bad news or just things that anger us. And, and Lord, so what I pray this morning that you just fill this room with light. Fill this room with your presence. Fill this room with your glory, Lord. Give us a just reprieve from the things that, that might be weighing us down this morning. 
Lord, and if life is, is going well for some of us, Lord, I pray that we just worship you in that. We raise our hands in that, Lord. We, we absolutely just worship and praise in, in the ups and the downs because we know who is greater than the ups and the downs. So, Lord, let today be about no one else but you. Lord, I ask that for my own life this morning, my own mind, my own heart, my own soul this morning. Let me put my eyes on you. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with us?
God, that we serve a God that no matter how we feel, he is the God of breakthrough. And at just the right time, he can speak a word, and it's done. Amen? That's the kind of power that our God has. That's the kind of power that's within us. Because if we follow him, he's within us, right? I just want to encourage you with that today. Lord, I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know if it feels like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But you serve a God who is powerful. And at just the word, your breakthrough can come. So hang on and hold on because he is with you and he is for you. And he will make a way. Amen? Amen. Lord, fill our hearts with that truth today that we may walk in freedom and in victory and in complete trust knowing that you are a God who breaks through. You open doors that no man can open. Thank you, Lord. We trust you, we honor you, and we bow to you in Jesus' name. I tried so hard to see took me so long to believe it. You choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve. I, you take the broken things and raise them to glory.
come. We do thank you for your death, your burial, your resurrection, defeating our enemy that was the sin that's in our life. So, Lord, this morning, let's just revel in that. Let us just be in that. Let's marinate in that this morning. Bless the opening of your word this morning. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, you can head on back with Maddie and Miss Tiffany. She's back over there if you guys want to go. Um, Brody's going to come around with the offering. I did um, forget something in announcements. Um, we do have giving letters, comp- contributions. So if you gave this p- past year, um, it's out there on the table where the coffee is. Um, that way you can use that for your taxes and all that good stuff. Um, there are times in my life, I'm going to move that back just a little bit. There's times in my life right now where I have to get up in the middle of the night, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The older I get, the more times I'm having to get up in the middle of the night. And uh, everything's fine with it, all that, you know, my eyes are adjusted to the dark, right? And then I'll go into the restroom and, and then I'll come back, right? And... Um, I'll kind of feel my way because my, my eyes are getting adjusted back to the darkness, right? Does that make sense? Kind of feeling the walls and all that kind of stuff. And I'll finally make it back in to the bed, and I just kind of flop down, right? And that all wakes Nicole up and all that good stuff. But uh, everything's great with that until we decide that we don't like the way our room is, right? And we'll move the bed. And then the first time we move the bed, I get up in the middle of the night, and I come back, and and uh, sure enough, I'll just keep walking like normal, and my bed, my knee will hit the bed frame, right? And so I know what you're saying. It must be a very low bed frame for my knee to hit anything, right? Yeah, I, know, I knew Matt was probably thinking that at one point, but right? But, and then I'll just hit it, and then guess what? It's like everybody's getting up in the house. Ah! Right? It's because I can't see. I can't adjust to the light, right? And so as, as we're starting to learn from these letters in John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, these letters that John was writing to these churches, right? We learned last week that the subject of these letters is Jesus, is that Jesus is fully God and fully man. Because if you remember, the Gnostics were dealing with this whole thing of only G- Jesus was only God for a short period of time. Remember, like he had a cape on, like Superman. And he would take that cape off. But we learned last week that Jesus was fully God and fully man. I don't understand that. I don't get that. One day I will understand. Um, so we learned that last week at the beginning of 1 John 1, that, that, that God is the subject of these letters, right? But also, when we start digging in today, we're going to learn that, that Jesus also lights up our life in a way that we can follow him. Right, And so these Gnostics, remember there was three things that these Gnostics deal with, and next week we'll talk a little bit about the dualism of life, that if my soul is, if my soul is perfect because I've, I've been saved by God, then my body isn't. We can't just live a way that we want to live, right? That's the Gnostics believe, well, since my soul's saved, my body isn't, so I can't control my body. That's, that's the dualism part, but the part we're going to deal with today is the illumination part. The light part, the, the part that, that lights in our lives are sometimes, our lives, we think we can light our own way, right? But what, we, what happens when we do that is we don't really do that very well, right? So in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, John says this to the churches. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Easy way for us to say that would be God is perfect light. If we say we have fellowship with him, while we're in the darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So God is perfect light, which means there's no darkness in him. Um, there's a couple videos on, on the internet, like these guys have got these big high beam flashlights. I don't know if you've ever seen them. And like they just shine like crazy, right? That's what I think when I think of perfect light. Perfect light is where nothing that the darkness can disturb. You see, we've got to understand that, that statement alone. God is perfect light. There's no 
darkness in him at all. It encompasses everything that we know about God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no darkness in him. There is no um, unintentional wrongdoings. There's none of this. It's a perfect light that by everything he sees everything. You see, that means God is holy. And we think of this word holy as something like, oh, like, you know, with the Holy Father, all this kind of stuff. But really, the, the actual word means that God is set apart from everything else. He's different than everything else. He sees things differently than everybody else. He, sees, he, he understands things different than everybody else. He's just set apart. He's holy. And it, what we don't understand is, since he's set apart, since he sees and he knows things differently, he knows what the darkness can do to us. He knows the harm of it, Adam and Eve. It was a simple command, do not eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right? And they thought, well, if I eat of it, I'm going to think like God, I'm going to believe like God, but God knew the harm of it. He knew what would enter them, and the, and the first things that they knew that they weren't, they didn't have clothes on. So we automatically think that, that their eyes opened up to everything, but really it opened up to the evil that God was protecting them from. But you see, the biggest thing that God knows that we don't understand is the freedom that light brings to us. And so this is what John's trying to tell these churches, that, that God is light. He's perfect like nothing can defile his light. You see, this freedom that comes is from the bondage that sin brings to us. You see, the word that they use for light in this original language means every form of light. Not just the light that, that like this projector is pointing, or these lights that are up here. It's even the light of, of, of our soul, the light of our minds, the light of our hearts. All, every form of light that we can think of, it means that God is perfect in all those. So when, his, when he shines in our life, we can actually see the truth of the life that we're living. That's why verse 7, when we get to it here in a second, or verse, six, it, um, or verse 7, it says we can have fellowship with one another, right? Because his life shines our path, and it brings the truth. So two questions as we dig in this morning. The first one is, how do we walk in this light? And the second one is, how does this light help us fellowship with one another? So how do we walk in the light? It's like cleansing. It's cleansed, right? Um, a long time ago, Craig and Heather got married on Valentine's Day, which was like a, it was weird because it was like a Thursday night or something like that back then. So it was, gosh, it's 2022, so, man, 20, 25 years, going on 25 years this year? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, they, 1997. All right, so I had to come home from college. I was going to Campbellsville University at the time, and, and just like it does sometimes in February, it snows, right? And so as I got just on I-75, because if you've ever been to Campbellsville University, you've got to take some back roads, and you've got to take the Bluegrass Parkway, and then you've got to kind of come up through Lexington, and then you get on 75. So as soon as I got on 75 in Lexington, the snow started hitting. And it took me three hours to get from Lexington to just outside of Dry Ridge. So anybody that's ever driven that, right? You guys understand what I'm saying. Three hours to go maybe 60 miles. And uh, it was a whole big to do because at, at, at this time, there were no, really no cell phones. No, um, so I had to stop. They closed down 75. I had to stop and get a hotel room. Well, here's the problem with a poor college student. Does a poor college student have anything to get a hotel room with? No. Well, this poor college student back in 1997 didn't even have a cell phone. Now it's just simple. I can do everything on my cell phone and pay on my cell phone, all this stuff, right? So I had to stop at a Econo Lodge in Richwood, Kentucky. I don't even think it exists anymore. Probably good because I stayed in it that night. And I remember it. Yeah, it's probably good it doesn't exist anymore. But and I had called my mom and dad. Hey, I can't. I don't have any money. 
I, they won't take a check. It's probably good that they didn't take a check either, right? Because in college, I was writing checks for like $2.50 to get chicken. Um, I, and mom and dad's like, well, just give my credit card number. And you say, hey, well, we can't do that. We've got to see a physical form of it. And I'm like, it shut 75 down. How am I going to get this physical form of it? So we had to go find a fax machine. Mom and dad had to find a fax machine. They had to fax their credit card to this hotel, and I got to stay at the hotel that night. But that wasn't the part about the story. It was just a crazy story, right? I'm, I'm, at that point, I'm 20 years old, and I get, I'm like, okay, what's going on? The only thing that was around was a Waffle House. I mean, it was like a crazy story, right? And all because I love Heather and Craig. Right? But here's the thing about it. As soon as the sun went down and I turned my headlights on, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything because the snow had covered the headlights. And I had this old 1985, the greatest truck that's ever existed, Nissan 4x4. Just a little extended cab with the seats in the back like that. You guys know what I'm talking about? And, and so I was in four-wheel drive, and it got about three miles to the gallon. Um, but it didn't have like heated headlights. It didn't have any of that stuff. So every now and then I had to stop and had dust off the headlights because I couldn't see at night. The, the, the lights were covered, right? I was blind. The lights were blinded by the darkness of the snow. You see, we got to understand this is why Jesus died for our sins. Because even though we have the light of the world, that Jesus came, Jesus lived, he died, and he rose again, that we have the light of the world, right? That light was blinded by our own darkness. And see, the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from our sins. It's like me wiping off those headlights, right? So we can see the light that's coming through us. You see, this cleanses us from sin is a direct reference to the sacrificial system which next week i'll talk a little bit more about but you remember god killed an animal to cover this the nakedness of adam and eve right and that was the start of the sacrificial system so this blood that jesus shed is what cleanses us from the sin and his resurrection is what gives us the opportunity to walk in light it's just one thing to be forgiven but to actually have an opportunity of a new life to walk in this light that God provides. You see, God is light, and because of Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection, we can now walk in the light. We're cleansed. There's nothing blinding that light. There's none of our inside of us, the, the things that sin has done into us, blinding the perfect light that God gives us. But here's the thing about that light as we get, as we are continuing to becoming more and more like jesus we don't have the full light we won't get the full light one day until we're reunited with god and that's why it says in psalms 119 105 your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path i've done a lot of study on that verse i love that verse it's one of my favorite verses in the bible and this is why we're never promised the full blinding light perfect light of god as we're following jesus God's changing us to be more and more like Jesus. We get Jesus' forgiveness, and we are learning to be more and more like Jesus. But Psalms 119.105 tells us that one day we will be made whole in this perfect light. But now we have the Word. Remember the Word, Logos, right? The, the thing that brings order, the thing that brings sense to the cosmos, right? But we have the Word now to light our path and our feet. So when I think of that, right, I think about flashlights, and I think um, yesterday we, we went to Nicole's grandma who passed away uh, a little bit before Thanksgiving time, and um, well before Thanksgiving time. It's like October, right? And, and um, we went over there to kind of go through the things that her aunt lives over there, and she's kind of piled things up that were maybe significant to us, our family, her family, all that kind of stuff. And and so we went over there to kind of look at things. And, you know, on the way over, we're kind of like, well, I don't know if we're going to want anything. I don't know, right? It's kind of old. And we got over there, and it was like, yeah. Yeah, I took this, I don't even know why, it was a remote holder that was a couch potato. I was like, yeah, cool, I'm going to take it. Put my phone in it. I don't know why I took it, right? 
But I remember going down into the basement. Lily kept saying, this is like you're talking old 1900s farmhouse. I say 1900s. I was born in the 1900s. That's not that old, right? But like early 1900s. And so like a cellar basement. And Lily kept, Lily opened the door and she goes, no, Jeffrey Dahmer's down there. I'm like, no, Jeffrey Dahmer's not down there. He's dead. That's what you know. I mean, but she's like, it's dark. And then like you can't see anything. And then you flip the lights on. What can you see? You see not much, right? So you still got to have a flashlight. But what's a flashlight do? It doesn't illuminate the whole room, right? It just illuminates your next step. See, this is the light we get when we choose to follow Jesus. Is it guides our path and it guides our feet. We would love to see God's perfect light light everything about us, right? We would love to say, hey, God, this is what I need. Show me the way to go. Nicole's car that she drives has automatic brights on her car. It freaks me out when I'm driving it. Because I'm afraid that it won't go off and somebody's going to get really mad and road rage me, right? But, but it's also, it makes it really bright and then not bright. See, we want the brights to be on all the time, but God says trust comes from one step at a time. If I show you the whole thing, then I don't know if you can handle the whole perfect light. So when he cleanses us, he gives us this light one step at a time. My favorite, one of my favorite authors, Craig D. Armsborough, says this way, In walking with God, it's not about knowing the facts. Rather, it's about knowing the God who knows all the facts. We don't have to know the whole story. We don't have to know the whole plan. We know the one that knows it all. We know the one that provides more perfect light than anything. And it's trusting in that that the next step that he lights up for us is the perfect step he wants us to take. See, it's about walking in the truth that God provides, not our truth. See, this was what John was dealing with when it came to illumination of, of the Gnostics, right? The Gnostics believed that that we will come to our own truth, and that will light our way. Does it sound familiar? And if it lights our way, it doesn't matter who's in our wake, right? My way is the best way, so our truth will tell us which way to step. But you see, walking in God is about His truth lighting our way. And it's walking in the steps that He's provided. It's more than just behavior control. I want you to understand that. It's like raising your kids. It's more than just behavior control. We want them to be able one day to function on their own, right? And God's just saying, I know what's best for you, and I want you to trust what's best for you. And it's not what you think is best for you, it's what I think is best for you. And it's trusting those steps. So that's how we get to walk in the light. We get to walk because we're cleansed. So how does walking in the light help us when we fellowship with one another, right? It's about measuring. See, measuring is something we do a lot. I've been measuring a lot since the new year. Every day, twice a day, stepping on that scale. That's just measuring me, right? I will say it's not good to step multiple times on a scale during the day. Or we'll measure, you know, our bodies or we'll go and you know, um, we do, at football, we kind of do some measuring things. We do testings and all that kind of stuff, right? Cooking. Good cooks measure. Me, I don't. Just let it rip and see what happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot of things that we measure. We, we measure if we're doing home improvements. Like I said, good people that do home improvements, I have the same method as cooking and home improvements. Just let it rip and see what happens. I do. <laughs> Drives Nicole nuts. She's like, it's crooked. Well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so we measure a lot in our society, right? But when Brody was born, measuring was a big thing. Actually, when Lily, because of the measuring when Brody was born was a big deal, it became big for us when Nicole was pregnant with Lily. See, when Brody was born, Brody, um, Brody was born, had a hemorrhage somewhere in the last six weeks um, of, of, of the pregnancy, and when he was born, his head kept expanding, right? So 12 hours after he was born, we had to take him to children's, um, and a lot of things were said in that moment. It was a just, it kind of spun out of control on me, 
um, you know, and you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And they finally figured out that he had a hemorrhage. The blood kind of clogged up one of his ventricles in his brain. So he had what was called hydrocephalus, right? Some people know, older people know that as water on the head, right? So his head was expanding. So he's got a little question mark in the back of his head, um, which is a shunt that releases that pressure down into his stomach cavity. And, um, you know, they told us all the things that, that would happen with him when he gets older, and, like, he's kind of pushed through a lot of those things. Um, the big thing was that, like, multi-step math could be a problem with him. I was like, I told the doctor at that moment, I was like, well, I have problems with multi-step math. So he's probably just got the genes of that, right? So, but no. So, so when Brody was born, we had to go every month and had to measure his head. And then they would put him on a scale, right? Now, when Lily, when, when Nicole was pregnant with Lily, she was measuring a little bit small. Her stomach was measuring small, which I was like, well, then she got that from you, Nicole, not me, right? Because my stomach, you guys didn't laugh at that, man, right? But so measuring in our life became about comparisons of other kids their age. Right, so when, like Brody, when he was six months old, he'd have to be put on this chart, right? And, and you guys all know when your kids are born, you go to the doctor and they put it on that chart, and they're like, "Yes." Like I never have seen one of my two kids in that one percent of height because they're not just not going to get that unless it skips way over me, and right. So they're always kind of like. We're on that lower end of that height, right? So we're just kind of, eh, right? So everything was about me- measuring, comparison to others. Comparison, comparisons were big when our kids were little. Because we had to. We had to know where Brody's head was kind of fitting, right? And we had to know, was it getting smaller? Was it the right size? Did it need to be that way? See, this is how we have true fellowship with one another when we're in the light. It's not about who we are compared to them. See, if we're not in the light, we're not in the truth that God provides. So we will look at other people and we'll say, well, I'm not as bad as that. Has anybody ever made that comment? Matter of fact, I do it all the time to Nicole. If we're out and, you know, there might be a husband out there not helping his wife or something. You know, I'm like, see, Nicole, could be worse. <laughs> Just trying to pump myself up, right? Especially when, like, I've done something that she's got mad at. And I'm like, oh, look, Nicole, it could be worse, you know what I mean? Look, she's got all the kids, and he's just looking at fishing stuff. No dig anybody in here, right? But you see, when we're in the light, you see, it has nothing to do with who they are. The light exposes the truth that we're all sinners saved by grace. We've all fallen short. We've all missed the mark. Every one of us in here has sinned, and the sins that we have fallen are not the same for everybody else, right? It's the things that we're gravitated towards not the same as everybody else. See, we're all on journeys, but here's the thing. When our journeys align for however long that may be, our purpose is is to live in the light together and to make those journeys a better place, to make it a better journey, right? 1 Thessalonians 5 through 9, Paul says this to the church of... um, the church in Thessalonica, he says, For God has has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are doing. See, when we're not in the light of the gospel, we look around and we try to measure up to everyone else. And here's what happens with that. The competition will wear us out. Competition just wears you out when it comes to other human beings. It's tough measuring up sometimes. I'll be honest, totally this morning that there's times when I'm comparing myself. Like if we're walking, I know it's kind of funny, but it's like it wears you out. You never know how you measure up. You never know what people think of you. You never know these things, right? But you see, walking in the light of God is about showing people there's a better way. See, if you know when you're walking in the light and you see these things that you struggle with and that God is putting these pieces back together, you know that there's freedom in that. 
Because you know it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter. I use Matt because Matt's my friend. And, like, it doesn't matter how I measure up to Matt. It doesn't matter what Matt struggles with. It doesn't matter what I struggle with. What it matters is, is that we all struggled with something. We all sinned and we all fall short of our way. But God's grace is bigger than that struggle. And we can encourage each other. Like Paul said here, build one another up. It's more than just a message of, of just like, hey, you know, I'll hold hands, let's make everybody enter. It's literally to build one another up so we can be more light to this world. See, you don't have to try these games that we have to get away from our shame and guilt. And you see, the shame and guilt's what weigh us down. And, and as you look at verse 7 here, all we have to do is when that is revealed inside of us, we can ask for forgiveness and remember that we're already cleansed. See, I learned a long time ago from, from a, a professor in college that he said, see, forgiveness, we think forgiveness is something we do for God. But forgiveness is something God did for us. When we confess and we forgive, next week we'll talk a little bit about confessing. Right? When we say it out loud, a weight gets lifted off of us. See, God's, Jesus' death covered that. But when you ask God for forgiveness of that, just like any loving father would, he's going to lift that, right? Dietrich Bonhoeffer says this way, Live together in the forgiveness of your sins. Forgive each other every day from the bottom of your hearts. There's no more measuring when in your family of God. There's no more comparison when you're a Christian. You understand that grace and by grace alone you are saved. And the more that we live in that grace, the more that we, I like to use that term, marinate in that grace, the more we understand it doesn't matter. Your heart starts breaking more for those that aren't in the light. When your heart starts breaking more, it becomes action, right? So I'm going to ask Amber to come back up. And that's the hard part when we start walking in the light. See, we, we think of things, right, when, when you're in the light, when you're in the darkness, right? We, I, I do it all the time. You know, I mentioned like Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, we can all sit in there and say, I'm better than that dude. <laughs> I would hope. <laughs> but it's not about that. It's about you. And, and here's where the hope comes in that. It's not that God's saying you're despicable like, like murderers and all these guys, right? What he's saying is, I loved you individually and corporately. There's a personable to your relationship with God. I can't explain it. I can't, I can't, I wish I could sit here and tell you the, the science behind it all, but, but just as it is for everyone, it's for you personally. See, that's where the hope comes in. That's where the love comes in. That's where the light comes into your life where you look and you say, man, I'm saved. Because we don't have to share everything that we struggle with, but to know that God died for that. Man. For you personally. That light, that truth should change everything about us. That thing that you've hung on to for so long has been cleansed. Let us live in the cleansed light of God that he provided through Jesus' sacrifice. Let us trust in each step he provides in our lives. And trust, here's the thing, and trust in the forgiveness that he gives so that we can build each other up instead of tearing each other down. That's why I'm always trying to be so open with the things that I struggle with. That's why I try to talk about it when I preach, right? I mean, I, I, I do 
live a life of comparison a lot of times. And like I said, that competition can get tiresome. And the hard thing is, is there's times in my life I get so caught up in it, right? I don't even know how to escape it. I don't even know how to escape it. I, I'll look at somebody, oh, I'm better, you know, that kind of stuff, right? And then next thing I know, it's Friday, and I'm just like, oh, I'm wore out, and I didn't even do anything. Because I'm not really trusting in the forgiveness, because to be truly transparent this morning, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Like, I don't get insulted by people because nobody can insult me better than myself. So sometimes somebody will say something bad about me. It doesn't hurt my feelings because I probably talk worse about myself. I have a hard time trusting forgiveness. Right? So if we have a God that's in perfect light, if we have a God that that loves perfectly and engulfs everything in perfect light then you can trust in that forgiveness you can trust that you've been cleansed you can trust in the fact that listen what you've done doesn't matter so you don't have to tear down you can build up because you know the person that's building so two questions I'm done this morning the first one is simply this are you walking in the clean perfect light of God Are you looking through that lens of your own life in that light of God, how God views you? So in turn, when you know how God views you in that light, if you're a follower of Jesus, you know that you can start looking at people that way in your own life. And to walk in it, you got to follow Him. Some people call that becoming a Christian. Some people call that being saved. To, to walk in this clean light is to be a follower of Jesus. And to do that, you know, there's, there's multiple ways. You know, there's not multiple ways, but there's multiple presentations on how you can follow. Like, like the ways that I'm getting ready to say, right? Some will say you got to admit, you got to believe, you got to confess. That's, that's one way, ABC. In other ways, is you just look at God and just say, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've messed up and I need your forgiveness. I just want to follow you. Some of you pray. Some people do. What it means is, is I'm turning my life over to Jesus as Lord so I can follow. And, and you need to acknowledge that. You need to say that. You know, you need to say, listen, God, I'm, I'm done playing the games. I'm done just trying to think that my performance matters, but it's really just you. And I need that forgiveness. I want that forgiveness. And I know you give that forgiveness. I'm crying out for that forgiveness. I've sinned. And I want your clean light. I believe that you rose from the grave and you died again to give me that clean light. And I want to follow you. The Bible tells us that when one person follows Jesus, there's rejoicing in heaven. And then life, you know, the second question I have as I'm ending today is, how is your community? That's what life is about in Jesus. That's how you become closer and closer to God. It isn't about how you live your life and you read about being with one another and how you're building up one another and how we can each be little lights and put our lights together and it makes the path wider so we can see where Jesus wants to be. That's the hope of the love letters that John wrote. Is that there's no more measuring up that has to be done because he loves you because you're you he, you're his creation so as I pray I'm going to ask you guys to stand Father we thank you for your love we thank you for that grace we thank you for that mercy Lord Lord I thank you for the, the perfect light that you provide in our lives I thank you for the forgiveness you pro provide in that light but Lord I pray not just for me I pray for everyone in this room. That we can live in the light better. That we can trust in the next step that you provide. That we can start looking at each other as, 
as not competition but with a heart open to building up that life Lord use us but also Lord be in us fill us so we can praise your name with everything that we have we ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name Amen you guys for joining us today um i think if i forgot anything remember if you got your giving reports out there if you need that um and enjoy for most of you a day off tomorrow so we'll see you guys next week